Hello, in this video, I'll show you how you can easily transform your studio backdrops in Photoshop and how to remove any kinds of distractions and get a seamless kind of backdrop when it comes to Photoshop. So in case you want to download the Snoot effect used later on in this video, I request that you check the link in the video description to download the effects used in this kind of video. So we are going to first of all learn how to remove these kinds of distractions regarding this very photo and how we can easily make it look nice and seamless so in order to do this you're simply going to first of all come create a copy from the background there by pressing command j or you can use ctrl j on the keyboard to create a backup copy then simply come to select come and select the subject so make sure you come to select and select the subject or you can as well get any quick selection tools and you select the subject so you can see it has left out some areas and in this case get the quick selection tool simply come and make sure this addition one is selected and add a selection that has been missed so for this i prefer this to be part of my selection so I'll just simply come increase on the size and click on this tiny studio prop just like that so to subtract a given selection simply hold down the option key on the keyboard and click in a given area to subtract a given selection from that area so once we're done selecting the subject, it is time to invert the selection because we want to transform the background in this case. Just come to select and simply come to inverse. So right now we have selected the background and it is time to perfect the background in this case to remove any kinds of distractions. Simply get the spot healing brush tool. Make sure the mode is normal and content hour is selected in this case. So after this, we're just going to start clicking and removing this distraction so just click like that and you can see photoshop is going to do a pretty nice job sometimes and sometimes it may not do a good job but we're going to be refining this later on so i'll just come to the soft box yeah come to the soft box once again and try to remove all these distractions from the studio background so i'm just going to click like that So the advantage of selecting the subject is because sometimes we don't want to distract the subject as you're trying to fine-tune our background. So you can see by just doing this, you can see we are removing majority of these distractions from our studio backdrop. So I'm just going to click over those to remove them. So once we're done doing that, you can see the color doesn't look nice and even. And we still have these kinds of color inconsistencies in this very photo so what, what do you have to do you're just going to come and simply come to the brushes get the brush tool and ensure for the settings we are using a soft round brush the mode is set to normal past 100 percent we're going to be using a flow of about 65 percent so after doing that you're just going to come and start sampling color on the backdrop and trying to blend or create a nice color and this is going to be removing these wrinkles and folds from the studio backdrop. So increase on the size of the brush and sample a color. So I'm just going to hold an option, option and click. And once you have clicked and chosen that color, start painting option, or you can use alternate for windows option, click and paint option, click and paint. So just keep on doing this for every area that has any kind of color inconsistencies. So you can just paint on those dark areas, but ensure that you don't remove or eliminate the natural shadows that were cast by the model or any kind of studio backdrop or subject in this case. So I'm just going to sample and paint right there. Sample here and paint just between her legs. Sample here and also paint to create a little bit of separation between the model and the backdrop. So I'm just going to keep on option and sample option paint option and paint just like that and you can see right now the backdrop is looking nice and smoother than where we started so take your time as you're doing all this so option sample and paint option sample and paint and right now we are having a backdrop that is looking nice and smooth in this case so i'm just going to fine tune the backdrops just come and, and get the mixer brush tool 
And when we get the mixer brush tool, its work is to blend any colors that may have remained that are not blending quite well. So for settings, ensure that clean brush is selected. And the second option that is says, or that is saying clean brush after each and this stroke. So let me go ahead and demonstrate for you the settings. For the settings, ensure clean brush is selected. The second option that says clean brush after each stroke is selected. The weight is 9%, load 75, mix is 90, flat 100%. Weight 9, weight 9, load 75, mix 90, flow 100%. You can check or uncheck this so it doesn't matter for the last setting for the mixer brush tool. So I'm just going to paint and try to blend the transitions between the colors. So when it comes to the lower part of the image, which is the lower part of the backdrop, I'm just going to slightly zoom in by using Command Plus and reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool and try to blend those transitions. So to remove that from the lower part of the image, just paint like that to smooth in the backdrop. Click and hold down and paint colors just like that. And you can see this is going to make the backdrop look nice and seamless. But ensure that you don't remove the initial or original kinds of shadows and reflections in your studio backdrop in case you had any reflections in the backdrop. So once you're done doing that, command minus to zoom out. So this is what we have been able to achieve and the background now looks nice and beautiful and seamless. So after this, you're just going to come and press Ctrl D or you can use Command D to deselect active selection. And for this kind of image, I feel like the image is slanting somehow. So I'll get the crop tool and for the ratio, leave it to the original ratio and slightly tilt the image by clicking on the corner and hit enter or return to crop the image. So this is what we have right now. So after doing this, you can even come and transform your backdrop to look even better by adding a snoot effect or even changing the backdrop color. So let's first of all change the backdrop color by coming to filter, come to camera raw filter. So depending on the color of your backdrop, you can simply come to the color mixer and remember hue deals with changing a color saturation deals with the intensity of a color luminance deals with the brightness level of a given color so for this case i just want to choose this color so in case you're not sure the color that you want to change click on this pointer and click on that color you can see so when i start moving this around you can see it is affecting the blues my majorly so i'm just going to come the blues and i change the hue just like this and you can even darken the backdrop by coming to the luminance remember luminance deals with the brightness levels of a color so I just come and i'll darken the blue color in the backdrop just like this so you can see right now the backdrop now looks better and i prefer this kind of color for this kind of backdrop so you can even come and play around with the hue to see what works best for you. So I just feel like this looks okay and looks great. And you can as well come the saturation and play around with the saturation values or levels of this kind of image. So just going to slightly increase on the saturation of the backdrop. So after that, click OK. And this is what we have been able to achieve so far. So after this, you can as well come and transform the image to look even better. So in order to transform the image, you are going to add a snoot effect to the studio backdrop. So in order to add this kind of snoot effect to the backdrop, we are simply going to come and first of all, come and select our subject. Yeah, select the subject. So in order to add other areas of the selection, you can simply come and add this to the selection by getting the quick selection tool and clicking on this to add it to the subject layer and to subtract a selection, hold an option and click away from an area that you want to deselect or remove from our selection. Once you're done selecting the subject, make sure that you have downloaded these effects because we want to use them right now. So once you have selected the subject, just come back and ensure that you press or you copy and paste the subject on a brand new layer press 
command C to copy the selection of the subject. Then press command V or you can use control V to place the subject on a brand new layer. Then come to the snoot effect that you have imported in Photoshop and choose any effect that you prefer for your kind of photo or for your kind of image. So for this case, I'm just going to choose any random kind of effect. So let's experiment with this kind of effect for this image. So just get the rectangular marquee tool and zoom in for this. And after zooming in, you're just going to come and click on the corner right there and you drag down to select a given effect. So ensure that you have selected the dark areas or the corners of the image. Then press Ctrl C. Sorry about this. So press Ctrl C or you can use Command C to copy this and come back to the image. Then come to this layer and press Ctrl V or you can use Command V to paste our effect. Once you have pasted the effect, just come and convert this to a smart object. Right click on the layer and come to convert to smart object because we want to be able to change the values later on after applying them to this very photo or to this very image. Then come, press Ctrl T or you can use Command T and you resize it. So hold down Option and resize this to your taste or to your liking. So I'm just going to resize this even more like this. You can move it towards the side or you can leave it right there. So I'm just going to make this somehow smaller. So after this, you can simply come and hit enter or return and change the blend mode from normal and change it all the way down to screen. And you can see this is what we have right now. So in case it doesn't look natural for you, just come to filter, come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. And you can come and reduce on the radius just like this. So that you can slightly blur the effect on the background or on the backdrop, just like that. After that, you can now come and click OK. So in order to transform the color in the backdrop or on this effect, simply come, create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Then click on this clipping mask, but make sure the hue and saturation is just on top of the snoot layer. Then click on the clipping mask icon and come to colorize. Make sure colorize is selected or turned on. And you can now come and play around with the hue values to change the color to your taste or to your liking. And you can even play around with the saturation of the effect. So I'm just going to play around with the saturation and the hue values so that I can get a color that I desire for our snoot effect within this very backdrop or background so I feel like this is okay and it looks great to me then in case it is looking too big for your liking you can come select this layer then press command T or you can use control T click OK and you can now transform the effect and you can resize it to your taste or to your liking just like that. So this is how you can simply transform your studio backdrops when it comes to Photoshop and hit enter or return. So let's see the overall before and after for this kind of tutorial. This is the image initially before and this is the after before, after before, after. So this is how you can make your images or your backgrounds better when it comes to Photoshop. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to keep practicing and as well keep creating.